Hey everyone, I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited to show you this one. I wasn't planning to record this video, uh, but we were starting to put together a demo for a customer on basically showing, connecting to a bunch of different sources and getting that data out to a bunch of different platforms. And I was kind of like, oh, I got to build up this demo. And then five minutes later, I was done. And I was like, well, that's really cool. I've got to show, <laughs> I've got to show this off, right? So this is kind of my, hey, this is my shiny new car <laughs> demo. You just have to bear with me. But I'm really going to show you some of the power of uh, HiBite and how it scales as you do work, how you can leverage that work uh, continually. So in this demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to a number of input sources. I'm going to connect to CSV. I'm going to connect to Sparkplug, uh, Sparkplug with ignition pushing data in. Uh, and then I'm also going to connect to SQL. I'm going to model all that data right in a single model, and then I'm going to ship it up to... Uh, REST to SQL Server, and then also AWS site-wise. And unlike the other demos where I built them from scratch, I'm just this one already exists, uh, and then I'm just going to show you kind of how I did it. So the first thing is the input sources, right? So uh, let's start with SQL. So I have a local SQL Server uh, installed. I've put all the configuration in here, and I've defined an input. And in that input, you'll see if I expand this, there's an assets table. So I'm saying select everything from assets where the asset ID is equal to N52. So I'm looking for a specific row in that column. And if I hit that, execute the test query, I can see some simple data is coming back, running minutes, part count. Right, so I know that one's, so that, or I've defined that, done my SQL query, I know that data is ready to go. Uh, the next one we'll do is CSV. So I've got a really simple CSV connector, and I'll do another video that's more detailed because there's a lot of functionality here. But I, I've uh, specified a file directory, and right now it's got a single CSV file in it. Could have more than one. Uh, if I open it up, you'll see it's a fairly kind of weird file, but specifically I'm going to pull from this line, right? I could pull all this data too, but I'm going to pull from this, this line of data. So to do that, I'm going to create an input. Uh, this is a regular expression, so it's going to match anything in the directory that uh, has this as the file, the end of the file, which there's only one file. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead a few lines because I want that specific line. I'm going to read one row, you know, max of one row, and I'm going to return that one row, and I'm just going to have the header that's there. So if I do a test read, for example, if I mess this up and do a test read, you can see, oh, that doesn't quite look right. But as I kind of fumble through the file, I see, oh, there's the data that I want. Right, and that looks like it's working. Now you could read, uh, you know, multiple records at a time. You can index the file, so you'd read chunks of 100. You know, keep track of where we're at. Read the next 100, and then we get to the end of the file. We move it to processed. The CSV functionality is a lot more advanced, but here I'm just kind of reading the same point in the file uh, every time for this demo. And you can see that's working. The last one I'll do is ignition. So I've got a spark plug connection, and in ignition uh, explicitly, if I pull up the designer. You'll see uh, I, I defined a spark plug output and then some, some directory hierarchy. And then down here I have a motor UDT. So this is a UDT definition <clears throat> I've created in Ignition. And I fueled it with some data from Kepware. So I've got some data from an OPC server coming in, filling that out. And I want access to that motor model. So I have, uh, I have Ignition, the Cirrus Link stuff installed uh, with the transmitter. And I've got the transmitter on, and if I go into my transmitter settings, you'll notice I, I've not defined the tag path, default tag provider. So I've left this all, all generic. And, and the way I usually do this is I bring up, I have a local broker that I'm connected to, uh, but if I bring up um, MQTTFX to see what Ignition's actually publishing, you can see here's the Spark plug address. That first part, Spark plug out is the group ID. Uh, motors is the edge and, and edge of node, and then Hollis is actually the device. And what Ignition is doing is it's intelligently kind of pulling apart this hierarchy to figure out, okay, what's the group, the edge node, and the device. So what that means coming back to HiByte is I've created a spark plug input. Uh, I've given it, again, it's a local broker. And on my inputs, oops, I missed uh, down here. So the group ID is spark plug out. The edge node ID is motors. Again, we pulled that straight from the what it's publishing. And then in the inputs, I've defined the, the Hollis metric ID. I could leave this general and pull on everything too, but I'm going to say Hollis and then bring me all the metrics. And if I test that input, you'll see, bam, there's that, you know, there's the data structure that's appearing under Hollis. So now I know that data is coming in, it's updating in real time. 
again, just a demo. I could not specify the ID and it would, it would be the same. But now, so I've, I know I've got my data from SQL. I know I've got my data from CSV. I know I've got my data coming in from, um, from inductive through Sparkplug, uh, from Ignition. So now I'm going to move to my model, right? And I've created a simple model here, a press machine model, has an asset ID, running minutes, part count. It has a child element called test data, and I'm going to use that to take the data in from CSV. And then it has a motor type, uh, a, mo a motor attribute of type any. And what I'm going to do is replace the motor definition model and ignition with that. And I've moved the test data. This is essentially the data I'm pulling from CSV. So when I create my instance, right, this is where it gets really cool. So in here, now in the references panel in 1.4, I expand this. Asset ID information I know is coming from SQL, so I'm going to expand. There's my SQL input. Expand that. It returns a single row, and here's my data definition, right? And I just drag this over, and bam. I'm in business, you know, so that I'm pulling that data in. Uh, with the, the motor information, if I select spark plug now that I got my input configured, motor, Hollis, keep expanding, motor one, all the data attributes. I want to bring in the entire motor, motor model, so I'm going to pull that, but I could just as easily pull in a single attribute, you name it. All right, I got that working. And lastly, the, with the test data, that's coming from CSV. So if I select CSV, I can see I have a single row coming back. I can see the definition, the, the uh, attributes in that row, and I can pull those over all the same. And one thing to note is since this is CSV, all this data is coming back in string format because it's a file, right? Uh, so I'm using parse int, which is JavaScript, to say take this string and convert it to an integer. And you'll see that in each one of these to convert them to int values. So you can see once I have those inputs defined, I create my model, like mapping that data, I can, you know, I can see my schema and all the, the inputs. It's, it's really simple. It's pretty cool. Uh, so the last thing I'm going to do is start, now I've got my data. It's all collected. It's mapped up. I got to get it out of the system. You know, where do I want to push it to? So I always create a, a rest output to test that connects to this webhook site. I'm going to delete everything that's there right now. Um, well, it looks like I have it running anyway. But anyway, it, uh, the webhook URL, I define an output uh, with the GUI the webhook gave me. And I delete the template. I just want the default JSON output. And then over here, I, I said it's running because I've added a flow that takes my press machine model, uh, puts it to rest. So if we jump in, what do we see? Exactly what we expect, right? This is data is coming from SQL. This data is coming from CSV. And this data is coming from Ignition. It's the, the fully defined UDT, and it gets published in a, in a JSON format. How cool, how cool is that? All right, but uh, that's great. Now we verified that it's working. Say we want to push the data to SQL. So if we jump back out and my SQL connection, I've created an output called uh, REG Press Model Demo. And I've said, hey, go create the table for me if it doesn't exist. And I've saved that. and then. I, the flow was running. Everything's running. I didn't have to shut anything down. I just added a target to the flow that is SQL. And if I bring up my SQL Explorer, you can see the tables there. And if I select it, you can see there's my data model, my asset ID, running minutes, part count. And then we've condensed the child hierarchy to be test data underscore CTR. That's the, the attribute of the test data. So we kind of flatten that hierarchy with that underscore. But you see all the data there, and then you see the data, same thing, flattened uh, from Ignition with a timestamp and the, uh, the instance name at the end. So we, we did no extra work, right? We literally just defined the table definition, said, hey, go grade it for me, added it to the flow, done. Awesome. Uh, the last one I'll show you is, is AWS, right? Let's say we want to get this up to the cloud. So I created a site-wise connection in Hybyte, and in there... Uh, just access key, secret key that you get from AWS. It's really the only configuration. Uh, and then I just specified an output. Again, I jumped into the flow. Everything's running. I just dragged that in, added it as a target, and saved it. And if I go up to my SiteWise account, you will see, if I go under Models, exactly what you expect, right? I've got a, the Press Machine model coming from Hybyte. I then have the motor model uh, that's actually coming from Ignition, right? Uh, the UDT from Ignition and the test data that's coming from CSV. So my model definitions are there. And if I go to my assets, I have my press machine as defined in Hybyte, uh, motor one, 
uh, motor two. So if I look at measurements off the press machine, that's the data coming from SQL. If I look at press machine one dot motor measurements, that's coming from um, ignition and test data two. This is coming from CSV. And then in here, right, now that I have the data in site wise, it's being stored accordingly, et cetera, I can, uh, I can build portals to visualize the data. It's that same data model. Um, let me just, sometimes I get lost in here. Portals, link, there we go. To a demo dashboard, a few more clicks will be there. But you can see now I'm charting, I'm charting the data uh, really easy. And if I go to edit this dashboard, you have that same data model, press machine, the motor data. And if I click this, you know, I have the current values and I just kind of drag and drop and build, build the screens. So you can start to see the power of high bite when you define that data model and your input sources. Uh, it's like every next step you take just gets easier, right? In order to add additional outputs now uh, is trivial. I can send this data to influx wherever I want. Um, so hopefully that gets you thinking, right? I, I think it's pretty cool. We put this demo together really quick, uh, and there's uh, just more goodness to come. I think it'll get even easier as we go. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. All right. Bye.